let me show you how to use these stencils stenciling on an apron it's like a fun easy way to just take any old or new white apron and just make it into your own thing that you would like to wear so these are stencils from my custom line that i sell on my website and so um I'm just going to play around and you will see I might change my mind and, you know, try new things. But you will definitely need a stencil. I like to use these flat brushes. Some painter's tape. Um, these are my favorite, like, crafty paint to use. And a paint palette where you can put down some paint. And I'm just going to cut out of my Trader Joe's bag. A little piece so I can put that in between the two layers. Just gonna do that. So the paint does not go through to the back. So I'm just gonna do that. That is perfect. So you don't need a lot of paint. You kind of need a little bit like that. I'm just gonna do a few options like gray purple these are like my favorite colors to use Oops. that could be a lot and then you just want to play a little bit on the position of your stencil what you want to do with it I know for sure I want to put the word inspire there right in the middle because that's kind of the front side that you will see. I'm going to hold it down. You can also use your painter's tape. And just tape it down. And then take a little bit of paint make sure you don't have too much it's like a little bit at a time and brush brush it on with tiny movements like this if you jam it down sometimes the paint will go underneath the stencil and that's something you don't really want so i will just go like this tiny tiny circles And get it nice and even. And then you can just lift the stencil up. And there you have it. Then I'm going to play around with this one. Because I like this mandala. And maybe I will just do half. So if you only want to do half... A stencil I like to use the tape to half it for me and then you can just put it down anywhere you want I'm gonna move this up a little bit oh it's not like that Ooh, it's not like that And I'm going to put it right at the edge. Maybe tape it down again. And then stencil again. So when you go over and over and over, like this with the little circles, it's not that much paint. So it will not go underneath, but it's still enough to just get a really nice smooth finish. Then I like to do two different colors, so like an ombre effect. So I would go half and then just switch to a new color. Same brush, don't really need to use a new one. And then start from the top. And then blend it. So 
so then when you lift it up it has a really pretty ombre effect i'm going to let this stencil dry so i'm just putting it to the side and then i'm going to move to a different one and so the idea that i was working on or thinking of was to do another mandala kind of idea over here or maybe even the roses would look pretty hmm Um, I think I like this one. So I'm just going to position it kind of in the middle. I just like eyeball it from the side. I can use this as my guide at the top. And then you can kind of even measure with your fingers. But this to me looks good. Getting tape and tape it down. I'm going to stay in the same color scheme I had. So I'm going to do the dark blue again in the middle. And then switching to the teal. And then ending with a light gray. Sometimes I do paint my finger and that is okay. But do not let your stencil move. And I continuously go around to just make sure that it's a nice, easy, pretty blend. Now going back into the teal. And then ending in the blue again as little paint as possible and then moving to this side again using the top as my guide and more or less in the middle and then starting with blue and so i don't really switch to a lot of brushes you totally can. I don't really see the need for that, but it's up to you. And then go teal. And gray towards the end. I like that it looks really pretty so even though I didn't put the protector inside it's just to show if you want to you can do that or you don't have to um, if you use a little bit of paint it doesn't really go through but you could if you want to and then I'm thinking to take this one because I like this border and I'm gonna put it right at the top Maybe I'm going to turn it around and do it this way. So again, using tape to just hold it in place. And I'm just brushing it on.
and then you have a cute little border and then i think that is enough for this up apron so of course with a new day coming walking by my apron i just did yesterday i realized i feel like changing it i think i did this too hasty and i didn't like it so easy way to just show paint changes everything and i'm just gonna paint over it so i'm just taking a flat brush works really well and i'm just painting over the lines i don't want to see If you are scared that you may be going to paint over your the white strip, I kind of want to keep that white strip. I'm just going to put some tape down. Painter's tape and baby wipes are like my best friends. Perfect, so you can tape it down. I have my paint. Now you can kind of paint without being scared that you're gonna paint your white trim in case you wanna keep that white. What I like is um, sometimes projects are just never done. It's like you can just add more, change your mind, go back. And there is a point where you need to know when to stop. But sometimes changing it up is totally fine. And not liking what you do, also fine. Now I want to kind of do the ombre effect, so I'm going to dip more into the teal to paint this bottom section. So I'm just going to paint, trying to do like a nice ombre. Okay, so I like to paint the teal at the bottom. And so before I go up to get my brush again with the dark blue paint, so I try to get my teal at the bottom really solid and pretty. Kind of like this. And then I can go back up and with easy strokes, Blending it in, dipping into blue, dipping into the teal. Getting this ombre effect. And even though I like to just always, you know, kind of stay with the same brush, I may consider switching brushes because I also want to go a little bit with white into this deal. So now I don't want to have like the blue on my brush. So I'm just going to dip, 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 mix, mix, mix.
trying my best not to touch the dark blue. And it's okay to end it a little uneven. Okay, so I do like this way more than what I had before. I can let this dry naturally or I can just use my um, heat gun and just quickly dry it. To check, you just put your hand down, lift it up. And if there's no paint on your hand, then it's normally dry. Okay, this will be dry enough for me to stencil on. So after you blow dry it all, you uh i was thinking um you know if it's dry it's easier to to stem, um, stencil on so even though i like this pattern that i tried previously or that i was thinking about previously i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna just do a plain one i was thinking maybe all the curls i don't know i'm just thinking doing this one so gonna line it up and tape it down And then you want to use very little paint. If you want to, you can kind of um, line them up so your spacing is the same. So by lining up with the last one, you can make an easy pattern. And then again, if you get little paint everywhere, clean the back of your stencil. And you can always just come back and kind of clean it up a little bit.
because you know sometimes things happen and it's fine you can always fix it just go back with a different brush and go right in there and clean it up a little bit and if it doesn't bother you then just leave it okay so this is just me trying to but normally i don't even care i kind of like the rough like arty look take off your tape you have a nice clean white line yeah i like this pattern way more than the one i previously chose and that's the thing and that's a really nice thing about making art and doing stuff it's like it is so okay to change your mind just you know change it do something different um and that's it for my little apron